Hello and welcome to episode 3 of our weekly travel vlog. This time I'm featuring my lovely assistant, Ivana. Assistant! So thanks for the feedback on the first vlog. Hope you can see us this time. Um, I know the lighting was bad in the first one, but I did rush into making that one last minute after I had an epiphany about how to make these vlogs. So a bit brighter today, so hopefully you can see us. And hi, I'm here too. And Ivana's in this one as well. After some feedback, everybody wants to see Ivana. No one wants to see me. Sorry, mosquito. So episode 3 is all about Krabi Old Town and AO9. We made our way from PP Islands to Krabi via a two and a half hour ferry and when we made it to Krabi Old Town we immediately noticed a difference change in the vibe and the tempo and the pace of life. There was no tourists, it was all locals and it was a much more built up city but there was absolutely nothing happening, it was really really quiet. So we stayed at a hotel called the Amnity Posh Tale. It was nice. Yes, this was definitely our favourite hotel thus far. We had a premium room, which was massive. So much space, the aircon was brilliant, the fridge, TV, safe, the whole lot. The only complaint we did have about the hotel was the bed was rock solid, but we'll take that all day long because the previous accommodation did not live up to this one. I've like, got to say though, like I've never had a hard pillow as I had at Amity Posh Yeah, it was pretty hard. It was like a bag of cement. A plus for me was the Wi-Fi. You could even stream Netflix, which was good. Again, the staff were very nice, very informative, very helpful. Definitely recommend the Amity Posh We don't know it is a, a hostel as well. Don't know what the hostel rooms are like, but the premium rooms were, were top class. So in terms of food in Krabi Old Town, um, everywhere closes pretty early, about 9, 10 o'clock. It's pretty much the first time that we've craved fast food. Me and McDonald's and there's been nowhere open. The only McDonald's was about 45 minutes away, so there was one night. It was a 7-Eleven job, and it was chocolate and crisps. There was a restaurant we did eat a few times called Viva Restaurant. It was an Italian restaurant. It was pretty decent, um, food was adequate. Um, wouldn't rave about it, but it, it served a purpose because we were starving. They had pizza. Pizza and pasta, carbonara. Oh. On our first morning in Krabi Old Town, Ivan had found this place online called Maharat. So we went there, it's a, it was actually a bakery which does breakfast, and it was run by this crazy Dutch guy who serves all his food fresh especially his jam, which was beautiful. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend that. It was a pretty cool vibe. Now in Krabi Old Town, this is where Ivana's love affair started with Cafe 8.98. She, again, she found this place online. Ivana TripAdvisor cost of it. Cafe 8.98 is owned by a Thai couple and it's run by this lovely Australian woman. The food is absolutely beautiful. Every morning I had the Eggs Benedict and the English breakfast tea was spot on. Reminded me of home. And Ivana, she had... I had, I had Eggs Benedict, which was amazing. Like I've never had Eggs Benedict on a croissant for French toast. I'm not sure if it was meant to be a dessert, but I ordered it for breakfast one day and it came with like strawberries, strawberry, like homemade strawberry syrup, um, honey, um, like fresh fruit, ice cream, cream. It was amazing, amazing. I loved it. So the reason we chose to stay at Krabi Old Town is we thought it'd be a good base um, to do a couple of activities. We went to the Tiger Temple Cave. On the day we did want to go to Tiger Temple Cave, we were told that the best way to get there was to get a shuttle. The shuttle was about 50 baht each. The only problem with this is that the shuttle stop it's right across from the taxi stop. Get the shuttle. Get the shuttle, because these guys Don't will charge. Don't get a taxi. These guys will try and charge you about 200, 250 baht to take. 300. When we jumped in the red shuttle, uh, the guy basically just drives around the neighborhood, try to pick up anyone that will jump in. And we were lucky enough to share the tuk-tuk up to the Tiger Temple Cave with a couple of Buddhist monks. So that was pretty cool. Another tip if you're heading to Tiger Temple Cave, and again, credit to Havana for checking this out. You have to be covered up. You have to have your chest, your shoulders, and your knees covered just so you don't disrespect the Buddhist monks. You can rent a throng though, and they do blow whistle at you if you walk in and they think you're not covered up enough. So the first thing that we've done when we got to Tiger Temple Cave is climb to the top, all 1,237 steps. At the bottom we were full of good spirits, but by the time you reached halfway, we were sweating, we were done, we were knackered. By the time you do reach the top, it takes you about 10-15 minutes to gain your composure. After those 10-15 minutes though, it is well worth it. It's the best view you can get in Krabi. After the Tiger Temple Cave, we made our way back down and at the bottom there's monkeys and these monkeys are famous for stealing things. We watched them as they jumped in the water, we seen them swim and go under the water. We did not know that monkeys can swim or go under water so that was pretty cool. After this we visited a place called Wonderland. We're glad we did because there's a cave around the back, there's a lot of nice cool trees and there's a Buddhist shrine around the back there as well. And this is where the monks sleep, you can see their sleeping quarters. So that was pretty cool. We also saw the laundry hanging on the line, which was cute. So this whole trip took up just over half a day, so we definitely recommend it. And if you are gonna go, take plenty of water, make sure you're well covered, maybe even take a towel. So the next day we decided to rent a moped from the hotel, which cost us about 250 baht for the day, which is very cheap. And we decided to make our way to the Emerald Pools. Ugh. Fuck. 
Ok. So it took us about an hour to drive to the Emerald Pools. This was the first time I decided to drive in Thailand and I must admit it was a lot easier than expected. The roads are crazy but everyone gives way so it is pretty safe. Although we did forget to put suntan lotion on. When we got to the Emerald Pools there's three or four different pools. The main one at the very back is called the Blue Pool. We arrived about half past two in the day and didn't realise that the Blue Pool actually shuts at three o'clock. So it was a mad dash to get to the Blue Pool and see it. After the Blue Pool, we made our way down to the Emerald Pool and spent about half an hour in there until a busload of local Thai children came and completely overran the place, which is fine. It's their country, they can do what they want, we're just tourists. And this made our mind up that we should go and check out the local hot springs. We were gonna give it a miss, but I'm glad we didn't. So Ivana the Navigator found a back road to the hot springs so it took us about 50 minutes to get there albeit down a dirt track and remember we're on the moped so that was good fun when we did get to the hot springs it was about five o'clock at night it shuts at six we didn't know what to expect but we were so lucky because when we did get there there was no one there so we had the whole place to ourselves for an hour the sun had begun to set so it was a little bit cooler we were roasted from the sun from driving the moped so it was really refreshing to get in the water even though it was like bath water. So I'm a massive bath fan, so I really, really enjoyed this. This was definitely the highlight of the day for me. Definitely recommend the hot springs if you're going to check out the Emerald Pools in that day. And that pretty much concluded our time in Krabi Old Town. A lot of people go to Aonang first and try and do these excursions via Aonang, but it's an extra half an hour in the opposite way, so definitely spend at least a couple of days in Krabi Old Town. So our next destination in week three was Aonang. We stayed at a place called Plon Le. Plon Le Hotel was another pleasant experience for us because it was the first time so far that we've had a balcony. You cannot describe how excited we were to have a balcony. The view was terrible, but it was a balcony all the same. And it's actually where I filmed episode two, where it was pitch black. Aonang is the perfect destination to use as a base if you want to go island hopping. There's several islands in Aonang, including Hong Island, which is James Bond Island, Pod Island, Chicken Island, and Rayleigh Beach. Because we were only there for a couple of days, we really had to pick and choose which ones we wanted to do. And also it's very expensive. You quickly find that you've got to pay park fees wherever you go, whichever island you go, whichever national park you go, it seems you need to pay park park fees so we had to pick and choose which ones we wanted to do. The first day we decided to do Rayleigh Beach and we're so glad we did. Rayleigh Beach was about a 10 minute long tail boat. It's actually on the mainland but it can only really be reached by a long tail boat. Now we would recommend that you get a return ticket. It's 200 baht per person for a return ticket or it's 100 baht each way so you may as well just get the return ticket. Reason being when we did come back from Rayleigh Beach we found that we had to wait in a shelter till there was eight other people to fill a boat whereas if you've got a return ticket you just walk up and you jump on a long tail and that's sure you're gone. There was no national park fees at Rayleigh either so it was made a relatively cheap day and the beach was absolutely beautiful it's definitely one of our favorite beaches and we picked a quiet spot right along at the end and when the tide came in around midday we decided to go explore the island now we did want to do the viewpoints but unfortunately we only had the flip-flops or jandals as Ivana calls them and the viewpoint here is virtually you're having to climb like this you're having to climb through vines, trees, all that kind of stuff so we didn't have the right footwear so unfortunately we couldn't do the viewpoint so recommendation take good footwear if you're going to really beach. We would also recommend that you go around the back and check out the cave. The cave has got a couple of shrines dedicated to things like fertility which is pretty cool to see. There's also rock climbing and there's a very famous dog that sits in front of the shrine as we're led to believe because when we did put this dog in our insta stories we got a few comments back about everyone else that had the experience with this dog so look out for the dog. We were also told afterwards that Rayleigh Beach has such a good nightlife. Unfortunately we left too early to experience the nightlife but we did get a feel for it when we were making our way to the cave. There was a lot of cool little huts and sheds in terms of bars and little restaurants and stuff so it looked really cool. We'd love to experience the nightlife. We managed to find a cider in Rayleigh Beach so we treated ourselves because cider in Thailand is like gold dust and it costs the same as gold dust as well. After Rayleigh Beach we made our way back to Aonang and we dined at an Indian restaurant just up the main street. The host was very attentive and the food was really nice it does everything it does all sorts of cuisines it does the indian chinese european food so we would recommend that i'll put the name at the bottom because i forget right now a09 beach itself is not that spectacular for a beach but it is pretty cool at night when the tide does go out because it retreats about 400 meters so you can walk so far in the water and it'll only go up to a bit knee deep we would recommend catching the sunset at a09 beach or the neighbouring beach. So the next day we had the dilemma. We were going to go to Hong Island, Chicken Island, Pod Island. Now after Ivana read a few reviews again online, we decided that we'd go for Pod Island. Reason being that it's a little bit cheaper and there's a little bit more to do in terms of the island. And we're glad we did. So to get to Pod Island, it's a long tail boat again. It takes about 20 minutes from or 9 and we would recommend you take all your electricals in a waterproof bag because the guy that we took absolutely went rapid 
and we all got soaked. Everyone in the boat got absolutely soaked through. So to use the long tail boat, it was 300 baht per person return, which is not too bad. But when you do get there, it's 400 baht per person for the park fees again. We must be spending a fortune just in park fees. Now, Pod Island is beautiful. The sand is probably the whitest sand we've seen so far. It's a very quiet beach. On the day we did decide to go, it was really choppy and really windy though, because we'd heard there was a lot of good places to snorkel. The water was really choppy, so it made it quite difficult conditions to snorkel. So we were unfortunate that way. But we did sunbathe, we did relax, we did go and explore the island. It was such a good day, so we definitely recommend that. We don't know what Hong Island's like. For sure it's just as nice, but personal preference, we can only recommend Pod Island. It's been a great week, we've had a great time in Krabi and Aonang. Hopefully you can see in this episode we have a little more B-roll in terms of footage and stuff. But in week three, this was actually when I had the epiphany about making the vlogs. So from the following episode, I promise to you that there's going to be a lot more images, a lot more footage, and there'll even be a few drone shots as well. And from what you can see here, this is Cal Sock. This will be the next episode. It's absolutely beautiful so far. I've had such a good time, so please tune in to the next episode and let me know how this episode went as well. If it's been better, then let me know. I really appreciate the feedback so far. When you do make these things, you wonder who's watching. And if you are watching, please just let me know you've watched it. Whether it's good, bad or indifferent, I just want to know you've watched it. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. <laughs>